Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. The second annual Wild West Paracon is taking place in Tombstone, April 26th through the 28th. Anyone planning to attend can look forward to a paranormally packed weekend full of VIP packages, investigations, world-renowned speakers, workshops, and vendors like yours truly. Plus, it's in historic and infamously haunted Tombstone, Arizona. I mean, come on. Now, I know how the paranormal can bring folks together, so I am really hoping to meet some listeners and fellow pods that I have met through the show and also make lots of new friends while there. If you happen to be planning to attend, be sure you stop by the Paranorm Girl Pod booth and say howdy. Get you a PGP hat while you're at it. Have a seat at my Storytime booth and record your scary true story to be featured on the show. going to be wild and fun, and I am just super excited for this one, y'all. May 4th, Beer Booze and Boogeymen will be airing our fourth episode. This one is going to be a special one for some folks. We will be discussing communications with the other side. The episode is called Last Visit, Loved Ones Who Come for One More Goodbye. Submit your personal experience communicating with a departed loved one or messages that you have received from your babies who have crossed the Rainbow Bridge. The subject of afterlife communication can be a hard one for some, but it can also be very reaffirming to know that you are not alone in these experiences. Trust that you are not. You would be shocked to know just how many others have had these communications. And oftentimes, these experiences in and of themselves can give us an overwhelming feeling of comfort, connection, significance, meaning, I really think it's an important subject and discussion to have. So I do hope my listeners consider joining us for the fourth on the fourth. You can send your written or recorded accounts to Go Stop Beer or call in during the show at 208-717-1611. That is all I have for announcements today. Let's get to our guest. On November 17th, 2005, a seasoned hiker on Silver Star Mountain in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest saw something a bit unusual on a snowy peak, unusual enough to snap off a few photos. These images have by now been seen around the world and capture what appears to be a very large, dark, bipedal figure, what many consider to be that of a Sasquatch. You can watch my guest story featured on Season 1, Episode 5 of Finding Bigfoot. Please enjoy my conversation with Randy Chase. Hi, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, it, it, was, it was kismet. Uh, we met in the hot dog line at Squatch Fest. <laughs> <laughs> yep, right. <laughs> and uh, like I was telling you before we started recording, it was it was that that Hawaiian shirt, man. Um, Bigfoot Hawaiian shirt. And I think were there pizza slices on there as well? <laughs> uh no, I think he's walking with the martinis, I think. Mar martinis. It's um uh, it's a fabulous, fabulous shirt. Um I could have worn it, but I didn't think about it. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, just having you is is more than enough. Um, I'm very, very excited to uh, kind of talk about your background a little bit and to talk about those photos that you took on Silver Star Mountain. Um, I, I am well aware of them. I'm sure most people listening today are going to, yes, yes, thank you for that. It's a well-known image, um, <laughs> and uh, we're going to get into it. I have a bunch of questions for you, but... To start us off, uh, would you mind just giving us a little breakdown? Uh, uh, tell us about yourself. Give us a little intro. Um, I've been, ever since I was a kid, I've walked around in the woods, been in the woods all my life, love it, love the woods. Um, there's something about the magic of the woods, being out there and yeah. peaceful, calming. I'm a hiker. I just love hiking. 
camping. Most of the time I camp by myself because most people don't want to go where I go. Um, I was in the Air Force for 16 and a half years, still hiking wherever I could around the world. And um, then when I got out, I became electrician, worked for the IBW, 48 Portland, Oregon. And um, now I'm retired, enjoying the life and times of going out with Bigfoot and meeting great people like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, how? Uh, why? Why do you say most people don't want to go where you where you go, or do you end up in a lot of remote areas, some hard to hard to hike places in general? Yeah, I'm back in the day. Now I. I still go out. Um, just seems like nobody wants to go out where I go. I ask sometimes to go and then, oh, I'm, I'm busy or, you know, people got their own lives going on. And sometimes I just go and, and right off the get up in the morning or in the middle of the afternoon, I go, well, I got to go hiking. And I just go. <laughs> Percentage wise, how much of your life are you spending in the woods, Randy? Well, Probably about, I'm going to say 80% lately. Whoa. It used to be 90%. <laughs> Whoa, that was unexpected. <laughs> I was going to be like, well, I, even even 10% is is huge for, you know, the, the average person. But you're not the average hiker. Um, well, I've, I've hiked, when I lived in down in Vancouver, Washington, I've hiked both sides of the Oregon and Washington Gorge, every single trail. Wow. Um, I, my favorite places are Indian heaven and Gifford, of course. And mm -hmm. I've started to, uh, investigate the dark divide, which I love. It's so remote. Ooh, wait a second. Wait a second. Is that, that's, uh, that's where, uh, Pyle was right. When he, when he wrote that book, Rob, Robert Pyle. I think so. I think you're where right. where Bigfoot walks. I I want to say that that was where he was. I I don't know. I'll have to go back and re-edit if, uh, <laughs> if that's incorrect. <laughs> but I'm pretty yeah. I've got that book. Um, whoa. So okay. So you make it out into Gifford Pinchot National Forest quite a bit. You know what? I was I was really shocked. Um, when I was watching your episode on finding Bigfoot, and they were saying, it's it's one of the oldest national forests in the country and it, it is also uh one and a half million acres of protected forest land i i i don't know why that surprised me but it's 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 huge yeah. so in not being surprised or in being surprised by that i'm actually not surprised that a lot of folks have uh sasquatch encounters and sightings and fine footprints out in this area it's so vast and so remote um <clears throat> which is exactly, exactly where you were yeah exactly Whoa. that's why i like it out there yeah it is getting more and more people out there because of of uh, more population coming in so people are coming farther and farther out but they're also closing a lot of roads and stuff and uh the access and landslides and things like that yeah yeah well in in all of this in the 80% of the time that you spend out in the woods um, is is a lot of that uh, with kind of a, a, a focus or an eye out for uh, a Bigfoot? No, I don't go out there to look for Bigfoot. Um, I just go out and enjoy, but I'm all now that I spent time with um, the Bigfoot community and learned things like from Cliff and Bobo and Derek. And all the other people, I could mention a bunch of people, but I'm learning to hear things and I, now I know what they are. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also watching constantly while I'm out there, but I'm uh, relaxing. I like to just sit back and watch the trees move and watch nature move around me. And it's awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, I got to I got to get back out there. I grew up in uh, uh, Montana. And then uh, 
uh, Glenoma, Washington. I wasn't going to say it because most people don't know where that is, but it, you know, it's it's just out in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, I grew up in the right. woods, and there is something you you got to get back to nature when you can. Um, you don't realize how much mm -hmm. of a difference it makes until you can get out there in the peace and quiet. Um, exactly. Well, uh, how long um, have you actually like been interested or been involved in the Bigfoot world? Okay, so the first time I had an encounter was back in 1970. Just a young kid then at the time. And uh, it was, we were heading to my um, grandmother's house in um, Elk City, Idaho. And uh, but we stopped off at, at the time, I think it was my uncle or aunt's house in Kashmir, Washington, which is by between Leavenworth and Wenatchee. Mm -hmm. And my brother and I got, got up in the morning, I go, hey, let's, Russ, let's go up in the woods and goof around before we have to leave. And uh, so we went up there and the east side is different than the west side. You can, it's more open and stuff. And we were mm -hmm. on this ridge and, um, Something caught my eye and I go, hey, Russ, what's that over there? And he goes, I don't know what that is. This big, tall creature or it it, it was a, it wasn't the color of a black bear, but it was, it was more dusty brown color. And it was wandering around uh, on it, you know, walking around, shaking. It was a really tall and we didn't know what it was. I go, hey, let's go check it out. Now, we had to go down into this canyon and come back up to get to that area well when we got we went down and we came back up and all we could this nasty smell just reeks so bad we didn't think about looking for tracks you don't think about this kids you're just trying to figure out what where to go what was that you know yeah yeah so then when we got to idaho where my grandma was um the first thing out of her mouth was you saw sasquatch and then she started telling us all these stories about miners and loggers in that in that area of the things that happened i mean with this it was awesome and then and then after that oh. i never thought about any of the stuff until you know later right how did was, did she say sorry i was surprised there for a second cough guard did she say you saw sasquatch because she because you had told her like what had happened or she smelled it on no, you. she what we told her well how it acted and what we saw that's the first thing out of her mouth was you saw sasquatch it wasn't bigfoot it was sasquatch oh okay the word okay. bigfoot wasn't out then i don't think of course of course i was a kid and i wouldn't know so whoa well how far away was that like could you see features on it you could see the the head and the whole body walking around. It, I'm gonna mm -hmm. say I'm looking out the window right now. Probably a hundred yards away, because we had to go wow. down and dip and come back up. And you know, you got it. It was just it happened so much. And I always have this in my mind all the time now. I mean, ever my whole life, I've thought about that, but mm -hmm. but. Nothing really happened until this last thing with I wasn't really involved in until around this whole incident about the um the silver star sighting. Okay. Okay. So it it was that initial sighting and then since then uh it was you you, you didn't see or experience anything on, up until Silver Star? I wouldn't say it that way. I had like I said before, I don't I didn't know what to look for. I mm -hmm. didn't know what I was, if I was hearing or seeing things back in, in all the time from that point, back in from 1970 on towards now. Mm -hmm. But now, like I said, now that I know, I have, I can hear things like tree knocking. Okay, now I gotta hear what, if it goes again, is that? And then I try to investigate what's going on or something like that. Or movement in the woods, you know, something that's out there, and it's not the same as regular like deer, you know, you can tell deer or elk or something like that. But no, nah, this it's different with the with Sasquatch. Yeah. Yeah. Just to um 
go back just for a second here. Would you describe what that awful smell was? What did oh, it smell like? It it was so nasty. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it was a cross between a skunk and uh, horse crap. <laughs> Some the most ungodly smell you could think of. You don't forget that. It's like when you hear one scream, um, you don't forget that. It sends shivers up your spine. You just, you just, you don't forget these things. They yeah. haunt you for the rest of your life. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's something that I've been thinking about. Uh, has to do with the smell. <clears throat> Uh, because uh, I, I was at the North American Bigfoot Center not too long ago, and they have that, Cliff has that little like squeezy bottle display there with the pheromone mm -hmm. chips in it and mm -hmm. uh, and gave those a little sniff. And it just about knocked me on my butt. It was atrocious, atrocious. Yep. That, that would terrible. be a... a a stink that you wouldn't soon forget. And uh, personally, I don't think that that belongs in the forest. Like maybe you smell a skunk, maybe you smell something dead. Those, those are things that might be found out in the natural world. But what I smelled was, whoa. Yeah. Just awful. Yeah, it, awful. It's, it's way different. It, mm -hmm. Like a skunk smell. You can tell that. And like you said, dead bodies. Yeah. You can tell what those are. But yeah. That smell it's, I don't know, you know, well, they don't, they don't bathe probably or who knows, but being out in the dusty area where I was at that time, it's, you know, it's drier on that side. Of course, you're over in that area, you know, it's drier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> since then, in, in that span of time, like, like, I know you said, you know, you didn't quite know what to look for but you had this experience did this kind of um like launch a, a a kind of a personal um interest in in investigating and and joining up with other groups or going out with anybody like did 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 it put you back in the forest at any time to do some boots on the ground work like some actual sasquatch investigation <coughs> research Excuse me. you mean after after silver star um, after the original one, just between that span of time from the 70s up till early 2000s. No, nope, yeah. I never thought about it. I never anything like that. I mean, I guess if when we talk, uh, you hear, you'd hear something about it and you talk and then I would, I would tell, talk to people about that incident and that's about mm -hmm. it. But mm -hmm. I never, I never had any, like I said, I never had any incidents that I know of. I maybe did, but I never thought of it that way yeah yeah well so then uh silver star must have been quite the shock to you that just kind of oh, yeah it, it, yeah it, it really shocked me and then to find out more and more and and like i said and we used to have uh in portland you know, guy edwards used to have this uh meetings at portland every month and we'd all go there and meet people and talk about stuff. Their incident, their what happened with them, and guest speakers and stuff. And they talk about it. And then you start learning more. Like I said, knocking, um, what to look for, just the different sounds in the woods. That whooping. You know, I never heard about that, and now I know, and I hear them out there, and yeah. and throwing rocks. Um, just things like that. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's easy to talk about in theory for a lot of folks, but actually being out there and them and experiencing these signs, uh, you know, this evidence, having rocks thrown at your head, you know, that would be, a that would be, you know, Scooby Doo legs out of the forest. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. That happened to me. That happened to me down in the gorge on the Washington mm -hmm. side. Ooh. Um, I was, going up into one of my favorite areas and um i had found two left footprints probably about 17 to 18 inches uh, mm. long i couldn't find the right footprints because it was solid rock and then eventually went right into rock and about 45 minutes later the higher i got up i i, I got up there and all of a sudden this rock landed the size of a microwave 
you know, landed 20 feet from me. And I go, whoa, what's that? And so I just stopped and I looked around. There were no cliffs. There were nothing like it. It was just kind of little rolly hills. And I'm just looking around, anything. And I go, ah, it just telling me to get out of the area. And so whoa. I basically got out of the area. I just didn't want to, anything to do with it. I don't want it. I didn't want to. Um, I finished what I was doing, but I got out of that area fast. Yeah, you you took the hint. You took the warning. Yep. Whoa. <laughs> I don't think they would hurt you. I like I said, I camp out by myself. I've had the incidents that happen out there, mm -hmm. and they just. Uh, I think they just warn you to get out of the area. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, their territory, man. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's um, let's go ahead and start talking about Silver Star. So I, I, I like I said, I have a bunch of questions for you. I just um, um, I, I really want to kind of drill in and and just get a full wide view of this situation for my audience, uh, just to learn okay. about it and um, yeah, just the details about it. So to start out, would you um, explain to my audience like how how remote the actual location where you snapped the photos was like is it is it publicly generally accessible to like the regular hiker um is it is it where only experts should go like how remote is this oh anybody can hike this i mean i've taken kids up there mm -hmm. um but i'd like to say one thing most people when they think about where i went how i got up there they all say from Grouse Point, but that's not where I came up from. I came up from the north part and took Edge Trail. You come out of Sunset Falls up to Copper Creek and up to the Edge Trail there. And that's the north side. The other side be the southwest side from Grouse Point. Um, so I wandered up there. And at this time, I knew I'd be hitting snow, but I didn't think I was going to hit that much snow. And you mm -hmm. never know. Um, the way I go, that's, that's a little rougher than the other way. It's both ways are steep and it's not, uh, um, it's friendly to go up there. People can go up there. Mm -hmm. if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a hike. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. It is a hike. It's not, mm -hmm. I think it's like my ways, right four miles to get there Yikes. and the other way is six miles or 6.3 miles round trip i i can't remember like i said some of the stuff's not i haven't done it for a while oh that's all right that's all right well i mean four and four and six six ish miles that that sounds like beyond the average persons like they they have to specifically be out there wanting to do do that hike like it's not just uh, just a person of the public just walking in off the street kind of kind of right. track yeah yeah and that this hike i love the hike i like i love that hike it's like you're in switzerland or something like that it's just beautiful territory and once you get up there you can see i mean it's wide open Mm -hmm. it, it's a fantastic i've had so many great things up there yeah i've seen the pictures of the area it's it's absolutely <laughs> just breathtaking it's beautiful um what uh what were you doing specifically uh going up there that day like like what was your what was your point in being there in the first place just just did, just for the i wanted to get to the top i the top of the mountain mm -hmm. um, the mountain is a saddle mountain, and I I wanted I always hike to the north side of the, the peak, and I always just go up there and sit, look around, uh, enjoy my time up there, and then I turn around and go back, mm -hmm. unless I find unless I, it's, you know, my mind goes, oh hey, I go check that out. Like one time I was hiking up, and I go, oh there's Sturgeon Rock, I want to go check that. I haven't done that for a while. <laughs> and I'll go hike over there and see if anything's changed because, you know, nothing stays the same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, how about, uh, why don't you walk us through the actual event from, from start okay. to finish? Like, go ahead and walk my audience through it. All right. So, like I said, I started Ed's Trail. I'm, I'm prepared with the hike up there. I go up Ed's Trail. 
And that's on the, you start on the north side and it goes on the north east side of the P, uh, the ridge. And you hike up that. And on that, I was hiking along. And then I, I, there's an arch you can get to, but I couldn't get to that part because the snow was too deep. So I went back about a couple, probably 10 yards, 20 yards. And then I just started zigzagging up to the top. Uh, and got up there and then got onto the other side of the trail where the, the road is. The, well, it's, okay, it's a, a non used road. They don't let cars go up there anymore. And then I wandered up there. And like I said, I always come up into the, um, I, what I, I did was I went up into the middle of the saddle. And then I got to the saddle and I started hiking up to the north part. And probably about 10, 20 yards up from the saddle, my whole body just, all my hairs just, I just electrified. I mean, it's just like, ah, you know, it's like, oh, and I go, I'm thinking to myself, is that a cougar? Is there a bear around here? Something's here. I can feel it in my bones. I just, mm -hmm. it just scared the crap out of me. I mean, it's just like, ah. And so then um, I got to the top and I always want to get, when I get up there, I always do the same thing. I look at Mount St. Helens. I turned and looked at Mount Rainier, Mount Adams, and came around to uh, um, Mount Hood. And as soon as I looked at Mount Hood, I saw this black rock. It looked like a black rock. And I go, what is that? So I, I put my backpack down and I grabbed out my camera and uh, I turned around and I took a picture of it. And then it as soon as I took that picture, it stood up. I go, whoa. And I took another picture. And then I took a picture of the Columbia River. And then it came back and I took another picture and it walked down. At that time, it was walking down towards the south away from me. And that was the last picture. If I would have known what I would know now, mm -hmm. I would have took more pictures. I didn't, I didn't think about it. <laughs> oh, what, what was there? What was the impetus to take the picture, that first picture? Like it, well, it, it looked like a rock, but it, it must, there must have been something unusual. Yeah, I wanted to take it so I could, I don't know, I, I, I took it because it was unusual to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I just took the picture. <laughs> I, that's all I can say. I just took the picture. Yeah. Well, and and you had just felt that like that electricity, like you you were kind of already, kind of on on edge or on alert too when that when that happened. Yeah, I don't know. Just and later after, like I said, the electricity thing, um, or my whole body electrified or whatever. I found out through the Bigfoot community or whatever that. They send out signals. Oh, I lost my They uh, send out signals like bats to board you off. And I'm just wondering if that wasn't it. You know, that, that made me made me do that. Yeah, I've heard that. The the um oh infrasound infrasound. Yes, and yeah. I didn't know about you know you don't think about that and do the is it the same as uh, cougars or you are your mm -hmm. sense to do this i mean your body senses these things and we're that's how we're communicating with other people and animals i don't know yeah yeah i i mean i wouldn't be surprised i i've heard a bunch of stories that include that and people don't think about it until afterwards like like tying the two things together the feeling like it does and it feels like yeah all of your hair stands up you're suddenly afraid or just very alert and you don't know why and then this thing happens and they don't really like connect the dots until after the fact um what it kind of reminds me of like I, I feel like that that would be a natural reaction or a natural response like our bodies are very good antennas 
with stuff like that, like, and we don't really understand, but I mean, there's, um, there's like scientific studies that, that have proven like you can sense when a person is standing right behind you. If you do, even if you don't hear it, you don't see it, nothing, you can still sense it. You can sense the presence and that's just, it's, it's a bodily reaction. Like it's just, you're an antenna, man. So yeah, you picked it up. That is crazy. Um, well, what, uh, let, let's talk about the figure here for a second. So after it stood up, of course, um, and started moving away, what, what did the figure like, like trying to form the question here, did it occur to you there at, at that point, did Bigfoot enter your mind at, at all as a thought? Nope. I never thought yeah. anything about it at all. I just, mm -hmm. It happened so quick and so fast. I mean, that it didn't I didn't think about anything about that. You know, I did. I, now that it's all happened, I wish I would have went down there and looked at it. But at the time, I'm standing, and I'm already up in the snows, up to my legs, up my knees, maybe above the knees. Yeah. And I'm already getting colder, and I have the two-hour hike back to my car. So I'm thinking, okay, I've done what I wanted to do. And the winds were strong. They, they're really strong, even, you know, cold, blue day. I just decided I better just get back. And, and I'm, I, I, like I said, I kick myself now over the, all mm -hmm. these years. I should have went down there. Things could have changed. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So did it occur to you to, to run up there and follow it at that point? Or just after the fact, you thought back and was like, oh, gosh, I should have gone. I, that, yeah, exactly. The yeah. latter, what you said, because I didn't think about going looking at it. I just, I just wanted to get back, walk back before it got too late up there. You know, this is this is in November, so the sun doesn't stay up very long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, that's, that's not too surprising. Like you said, like you didn't, Bigfoot was not a thought in your brain at that point. Um, you know, just, a, just a figure, just a, a figure up there. Like who would have right. like immediately, you know, Oh, I'm a detective. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up and check out and look for footprints if you didn't know. Um, right. well, what, uh, it's, not, you... it's, it's not like you can just go like half a block and you're back to your car right. and you know, get on a regular road. I have to, if anybody that's driven up there knows that that road is terrible. So <laughs> just to get back and hope, you know, there's all these things you go through in your mind and stuff. So, mm -hmm. well, and like now I said, I didn't know it was Bigfoot at the time until later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now thinking back on that moment, seeing that figure, is there, was there any like features of the figure that that you pull out in your brain you're like oh that is that is kind of weird it's it's not really what i would expect on a human like that you yeah, saw with I, your eyes i looked and i that was not a human at all that because it was yeah. solid black and it was big it, it was it wasn't a little creature i mean it wasn't like a little it wasn't a bear for sure because it, it mm -hmm. even though it was black it just did, I mean, if a, a bear, I wouldn't think we'd be able to, and I'm just, I'm nobody, but I wouldn't think it'd be able to walk like that, like it was walking. It was just, it kind of walked on him. Where a bear, to me, you got four legs. And even though they stand up, the four legs, it'd be kind of wandering down. Or maybe even it would have, if it was a bear, maybe it would have tried to walk up towards me. I don't know. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that it's not a bear. It is just not. Um, the the Finding Bigfoot episode is uh, does a really good job. Like they zoom in on the th on the pics, and you can clearly see it's it's a bipedal figure. Um, it's got human esque features to it, but there's there's something else. And you're you're absolutely right. It, it it's enormous, and you can you can tell that. From the photos and they did the comparison with uh with bobo this thing was enormous it was it was yeah. beyond yeah i also have uh daniel perez and i went up there he wanted to see where it's all at and stuff like that and we went up there and he took a picture of me with my camera who now he has my camera um <laughs> 
he uh, took a picture of me on that same thing. And I think that if you look on my Facebook page, it's my, uh, well, I don't know what it's called, the, the one screen that's not your regular screen, but the background screen. Mm -hmm. And you can see me standing out there. He had took me picture of me standing out there. And I look like a little, I mean, I look small and you can see, uh, <laughs> You can see the, my clothes and stuff. You can see that that's a human. This mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's just when it happened, it's just, it happened so fast. You just don't think, but I just glad I took pictures. That's all I can yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how long did the entire an encounter last? I wouldn't say more than a minute or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how far away was it from where you were standing? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I know that uh, Cliff took measurements and stuff. I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. I'll have to go back and, and do that. I'll, I'll throw it in the outro for people. Yeah, I can't remember I, either. I don't want to throw some number out and then find out it's not the right number. But I do know <laughs> that I do know that Cliff took um, measurements and stuff like that and he figured yeah. it was, i think between six and eight feet tall but Whoa. if you look at it it's on the other side of the ridge it could mm -hmm. be standing on a log or a rock or it could be straight down the ground if i'm already standing in snow up to my up to my knees this thing's way heavier than i am you know it's yeah wherever and it could be a dip down there. it's not flat ground over there yeah yeah, well, yeah, even so, if it was standing on something, whatever, uh, it's it's clear to me uh, the massiveness of it. It's it's yeah. It's got some bulk to it. Um, well, as to your knowledge, um, what kind of analysis has been done on these picks? Analysis? Yeah, um, like a, a like official research. analysis. Well, I don't know. There were so many people coming out as soon as um, as soon as it came out. Like the guy from the BFRO, um, I never told you that part, I guess. Uh, John's Challenger. Mm -hmm. um, when I found, should I start talking about that part? Sure. Not? Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think I know what you're talking about. I, I, I saw something on the BFRO site. Go, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, what happened was this on Thanksgiving, which, um, I was, we we're having a Thanksgiving party at this, my son's house. He was sharing with the other person. And I said, Hey, why don't you want to see the pictures of my hike up to Silver Star? And I was doing that. And then somebody goes, Hey, what is that? And I go, I don't know. I just took pictures of that. And somebody, my son got on there and he, he started monkeying around with it. And I didn't know how to do any stuff, blowing up the picture and stuff. And the three other people or four other people are there watching him do that. They go, wow, that that's huge. What is that? And I go, I don't know. And then somebody said, that that might be Bigfoot. And I go, are you kidding me? And so then um, I called, uh, I when I got home, I started getting hold of like the news people, like Channel mm -hmm. 2 News or Channel 4 or Channel, I can't remember now. And nobody was interested except one channel and then they want to do an interview and then it came up that they didn't want to do an interview because nobody would be interested in it. And so I also sent a letter to, I saw the BFRO because I looked up Bigfoot and that came up. And so I, I text them or whatever it was back in the day. I, I said, Hey, I got some pictures you guys might be interested in. And it wasn't, but an hour later or less, um, John Challenger contacted me and asked if he could do an interview with me. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure. And being I don't know this person or something like that. So um, I, um, I um, took my son and we met him at, I think it was a place called Billigan's in Salmon Creek. And we went in there and we met him at the front door and I go, well, hey, here's the pictures. He goes, oh, let's go inside. And then I show him the pictures and he goes, oh, wait a minute. And he goes, he says, those would be, those are like six figured pictures. And I go, are you kidding me? And then he goes, no, put those away. And then somebody started talking about it. 
and then he, he did the interview and stuff like that. Oh. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. And <laughs> from that, the ball just started rolling, you know, and it was amazing. I mean, and I appreciate everybody that's, that's talked to me about it because it's nice talking about it. I love talking about Bigfoot now mm-hmm. and everything. And um, yeah. I think yeah. that's about it. I don't know. <laughs> well, it 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 seems like it's uh yeah, it's a life uh trajectory kind of changing uh event and it's just so funny to me because you know, at at the start, at the that moment, you had no idea. You just weren't even it it just didn't even occur to you and then, you know, not too long after, like somebody else had to tell you uh, you know that's that looks like Bigfoot, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I, I, and now I have the pictures, and I'm looking at it, and that, and I got the one, and I'm going, yeah, you know that that's huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Wow. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think. Uh, the only I, I had a, another question, and I I don't mean this in any way. I'm just curious because people can be a little, especially when it comes to Bigfoot news, big Bigfoot events. Mm-hmm. Sometimes uh, people like to come out of the woodwork when they really shouldn't because they want to be a part of it. Has anybody ever since that day tried to come out and either say that they were involved, say that they were just out there in a Bigfoot suit, just trying to hoax a, a passerby, anything like that? No. Um, I remember that somebody said that, and I forgot the guy's name, that, and I, I you know, you get that all these crazy things coming out, but the guy mm-hmm. said that, oh, that's the cutout picture that was stolen out of somebody's house or yard i forgot that guys i really it's what was back in that at that time <laughs> and what? had stuff up there now just think about that if it if it was a cutout how did it move down the hill <laughs> exactly i you know what but i feel I forget, like go ahead oh I, I just feel like a lot of people um they 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 haven't seen all of the pictures because there's no there's no explaining it away as a as a cutout or as a rock there's just no way it doesn't make any right. sense right and also the biggest thing i got about you know the, i if you go back and look up silver star and all the all the um comments about the picture uh they go well why don't you zoom in and why don't you do this why don't you do that why don't you go do get the pictures of the footprints and stuff i go mm-hmm. okay First of all, my camera was um, a Sony 3.2 megapixels. So I had that zoomed out as far as I possibly could to get that picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, what I just took to snap the pictures because, it, like I said, it happened so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, well, these are the, these are the details of, of, um, of an experience like this, that those skeptical of what people are running into out there, they, it, they don't take the time to learn. They don't take the time to listen to these kinds of details. These details are what make it very intriguing to me. And so I think that's, that's like why I kind of wanted to really dig down for my audience to really understand like this was a really quick encounter you had no idea what you got on your camera god you just wanted to get home like it it out of these are the details that that make it so compelling to me yeah so, hey if anybody wants to go up there i'll take them during november <laughs> or whenever and they'll see the difference i took um i took cliff barockman up there Tyler Bounds and Matt Pruitt. I think mm-hmm. that's his name, Matt Pruitt. We were up there checking it out. And that's when we were, and when we were coming back down, it was the nighttime and the, the blood moon was out. And that was totally awesome. So, like Ooh. I said, I will take people up there or whatever, 
but they've got to be able to be in shape to go up into that area. It's it's not your day flat walk. It's not for flatlanders. Is mm-hmm. my old friend used to call me the flatlander, and then when he started hiking with me, and I took him to Silver Star, he changed his mind. My friend uh, Ted Sperbro, he was my hiking buddy for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that Sorry, be... I got I got off on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's so cool. I, I I didn't know you were gonna say that. Well, we'll give people an option to contact you in a minute if they want to take you up on your offer. Um, that would be that would be so cool. Um mm-hmm. all right. Well, is let's go ahead and get to our final segment. Before we do that, though, I just want to ask you if there's anything that you want people to understand about this experience what what is that what what do you want people to walk away from it with well all i can say is they're out there Mm -hmm. they're 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 awesome and i kind of hope that i can see one again i mean also (laughs) this i think that certain people are meant to see them and see things are are that like in their in their spirit or something. I don't know. It just seems like I I have so many encounters and I could tell you more encounters since like I said I've learned about stuff mm-hmm. and these um, incidents are becoming more. I go out there, the more it seems like they're there, and mm-hmm. I I I want to credit people like cliff rockman and bobo and those guys for opening my eyes it's just amazing and daniel perez yeah 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 (laughs) leading well leading the charge for the for the rest of us you know laying that foundation and uh, the education about it um yeah because you know most people are going to go on just not uh, refusing to be educated about it not really you know, drilling down and listening um, what what's actually going on so they won't learn any further. So thanks to people like like Cliff and Daniel and, you know, just everybody yeah. that's in the field today. And, and, just... and Cliff's uh, museum in Boring, mm-hmm. Oregon, that mm-hmm. that he's doing it right. He's doing it right. Isn't it fabulous? Oh, I, yeah. I, I was not expecting it to be like that, but it's like it's so cool. It's the real deal. And it's just so much information. I was really impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't just, wait to get back there. Yeah. I'd like to go there too. He's, he's invited me to come down there sometimes and it, it's, I, everything, there's always something new. Uh, mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Let's, uh, let's do our final segment. And then we will let people know where to go online and then we'll close it out here. So uh, we're going to do final questions, final thoughts. Um, first question that I have for you, and I think I think you kind of answered this earlier or or if you have another thought about it, something else, um, feel free to say, re-say or say something new. But uh, the question is, is there anything different that you look back and you wish you would have thought to do in that moment? Well, like I said, I wish I would have took the time to go down. If I, like I said, if I knew that was Bigfoot, mm-hmm. I would have ran down. I would have got, well, not ran, but I would have walked down <laughs> there and looked at stuff like, you know, took pictures of the Bigfoot tracks. Mm -hmm. you know all these things i mean you look at the picture and i now i'm looking at it and you can see like could be tracks down there in that one area but uh like i said i'm just taking a picture yeah i wish i would have went down there that's what i I kick myself then i not all the skeptics would not be there probably i you know of course like everybody's saying they won't believe until they have a body, and I don't want to see that happen. Me either. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm. The more I learn about Bigfoot, the more I realize that would be uh, possibly the worst thing that could yeah. happen. Actually, yeah. they, they're living creatures, and uh, they just just trying to be a, a, 
do their thing. Yeah. And we're, yeah, this, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, next question. Um, you said on your episode of Finding Bigfoot that you didn't quite know what you saw that day. Um, a lot of time has passed since that episode aired. Have your thoughts and opinions solidified? Yeah, that changed. That, that's a Bigfoot. And now I know it's a Bigfoot. Uh, yeah. um, I did say this also when I got done. Well, like I said, I looked at the BFRO thing and I looked at it in like 1970 something. There were people in that area and they saw a black guy. Thing. And here's another thing I looked up yesterday to check out some stuff in May of seven, May 17th of 2020, this guy and his girlfriend were from Portland, went up there hiking and they, and this is a reported incident on the BFRO. Um, they had vocal sounds and they, they mentioned my picture that they were in the same area and, you know, it kind of, makes my pictures even better because now there's people hearing vocal is it vocalization there mm -hmm. yeah yeah to have did that I kind of con yeah <laughs> yes he did um, <laughs> well just to have that confirmation um you know the the uh corroborating uh evidence you know uh corroborating sightings and right. uh people hearing vocalizations in the area that that certainly uh does not hurt <laughs> the case of the photos um you know what i discovered recently I, it just never occurred to me it's located in skamania county mm -hmm. this area i mm -hmm. i i didn't know that <laughs> and, yeah uh, yeah yeah and people listening are gonna know why that's that's kind of a big deal like you know it's skamania county is famous for bigfoot yeah it's it's hot for Bigfoot that they have a, a newscaster was doing an interview or something like that down there on by Stevenson. Mm -hmm. And this lady had a car, her car broke down and she had an incident with a Bigfoot there. I, if I remember mm -hmm. right, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's all these other incidents in there. You just, yeah, you just go there and that it, it's all over there in Scamania County. Of course, I think that like, they, what do they call it? The, Bigfoot Highway. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot. Of, it's mm -hmm. deep forest back there. Well, we already talked yeah. about that. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like to hear it. Um, all right. So final question for you. And uh, I'm sure you've been asked a million zillion times, but uh, I'm always just curious to hear uh, people's opinion on it. Um, aside from what you said earlier, it's a wild animal. What do you think Bigfoot is? I don't know. It's just like, could it be? Okay, now we already know it's 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 all around the world, but they name it different things. Could it be the great um, primate of North America? Yeah. I mean, all the the continents were connected at one time, supposedly. Mm -hmm. um yeah i just think it's a a primate or it's intelligent that's for sure i mean it's going to tell you to, to warn you to get out of there and they got communications by tree knocking uh, vocalizations footprints are a big thing look at all the things that uh they got casts galore yeah. and they're not all just uh, the the thing also is like when they ask, or hey, it's not big enough. I mean, you got to you got to remember, they're little bigfoots, and yeah. they grow up. They mm -hmm. they're not like humans. We're not all the same size, no matter what. All over the world, we're different talls and uh, I mean heights and stuff and weights. Yeah, so bigfoot could be different heights. It doesn't have to be super tall, and you know maybe a couple are like only going to grow to be like six feet tall or five feet tall but maybe mm -hmm. they live for a long time that's why you don't see the bones anywhere that's another big thing well, yeah why aren't there any bones or anything i go how many times have you gone out in the woods and you found a porcupine bone 
in any it's animal deep. bone, any wild animal bone. Yeah. Right. You might find a couple, like even elk. There's thousands and thousands of elk out there, mm -hmm. and you rarely see any elk bodies. Mm -hmm. I mean, nature takes care of itself. They got people out there cleaning. I mean, the animals are cleaning the forest all the time. That's how they survive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and just on that, like it, being an animal, being a, a, a primate, uh, the 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 primate of North America, um, because we we have not gotten a type specimen, a body, anything like that to study. Like at this point, you know, we don't know. It doesn't have to. There doesn't have to be anything magical about it. Um, there could it could just literally be a, a feature of this creatures this undiscovered animals um protection you know like system the you know part just part of their makeup like um mm -hmm. like with the infrasound you know like them yeah. like them being able to kind of just camouflage themselves like crazy in the woods you can be exactly. staring right at one and not see it like so i think there's maybe some features um about it that we you know, we just don't know. Like some some animals on this earth have some crazy cool things that they can do that we didn't know about until we discovered them. So right, yeah. And yeah. with all the investigation, it, it's getting better with the technology and all that stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna mm -hmm. eventually somebody's gonna get everything they want. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, Randy. Uh, where would you like to send folks online to learn more, and where would you like to send them to follow you if you have any social medias? I don't have any social media now. Somebody, oh. I asked this: Should I make a podcast? I don't know even how <laughs> to do that. I don't know how to even start that. I, I, I don't have anything like that. Um, I, I think Facebook's the only thing I got. That'd be the only thing. I don't know if that's the way I should do it. Am I going to get flooded with? <laughs> no. I, well, I don't we don't. We to, don't have to do that. I can. I, don't I can know certainly. How I can start that. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Hey, you ever want to start a podcast? I'll help you out. You talk to me. Okay. I think that would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, people you got, have been you got saying I should write a book too. Ooh. Yes. So. But again, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I do that with all my time being out in the woods. <laughs> well, find you a nice sunny spot on a log. Oh, go old school. Pen, paper, just write it out. Yeah, I think exactly. I think that would be fabulous. Whatever you do is 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 going to be worth it and fabulous. Yes, but if you could find the time. Um, all right. Well, um, you want to just send folks to like, what's a good source to learn more about? Uh, the the pictures BFRO website, BFRO website, and if mm -hmm. you go there, just I mean go to the BFRO museum. I mean not the BFRO, Cliffs Museum in Boring, Oregon. My pictures mm -hmm. are there and everything. Um, I mean you can look up my name. It's Randy R E N D E E Chase and um, you can try to friend me on Facebook if you want. Maybe I'll start a different one. I don't know. Like <laughs> okay. I said, this is this is all new to me. I'm just you asked me to do this and I'm going, wow, that's awesome. I, I no one's ever asked me, I mean, to do an interview. Mm -hmm. So uh, I appreciate well, it. Thank you. It's it's my honor. It it truly is. Yeah, when I when I found that out, I I, I couldn't believe it. Um, but yeah, it's such an honor having you on today. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope to stay in touch with you and see all that you get into. Uh, but to close out this wonderful conversation, uh, would you like to leave my audience with any final thoughts, words of wisdom, or a piece of advice? Get out there and enjoy the woods and leave it like you found it. Clean up after yourself. That's it. Awesome. Randy Chase, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. You just never know who you're going to run into while waiting in line for a chili dog. 
My gratitude to Randy Chase for appearing on the show. You are the coolest and the kindest for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. Listeners, learn more about the Silver Star Mountain images and Randy's experience at the direct BFRO link below. You can find him on Facebook. Also check out his episode on Finding Bigfoot. They go on site, measure distances. Bobo stands in for the Squatch because, like, I mean, of course he does. <laughs> it's a fun episode. It's a good one. Randy also joined me backstage for a quick chat. To enjoy this and many other exclusive guest chats that cannot be heard anywhere else, join me over on Patreon. You also get other bonus content like bloopers, announcements, shout outs, early access, no ads ever, even free merch for my top tier. Patreon.com forward slash Paranorm Girl Pod. Follow me on social at Paranorm Girl Pod. That also includes YouTube. Subscribe, like, click the notification bell, and share. All of these little things that you do to support the show add up in big, big ways, you guys. That will be a wrap for today. Join me next time for an all new solo and thorough deep dive into Sasquatch sightings, encounters, and reports made by members of our military and other government officials. Mmm, gonna be an interesting one. But until then, have a great rest of your week. Stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open. <laughs>